Hi, this is Ellie Fishman, and welcome to our latest and greatest Facebook Live. Today's Thursday, June 10th. Hope everybody's doing well. And um, uh, I guess we are <clears throat> looking good in terms of COVID. Numbers are down. <clears throat> Positivity rate in different areas is 1% or less than 1%. That's really terrific. The hospitals, Hopkins, for example, had like 12 wards for COVID patients. Now we closed our last COVID specific ward last week. And uh, many places, big hospitals don't have anybody with COVID or in, and the number of deaths has decreased substantially. There's still some people dying, unfortunately and sadly, but many of those are patients who've been sick for a long time or they had COVID as part of multiple other problems. And so, um, we're looking better. Um, hopefully, the you know things will stay that way. I know places like Hopkins. Every day, I get a new notice about uh, what's happening and how things are loosening up, particularly in the undergraduate campus. I think all of us at the hospital, where I am now, still wear masks. You have to wear masks everywhere. But um, I, I and I think probably, in my opinion, you'll be wearing masks in the hospital setting till 2022. But you know, the latest rules are you can go outside, you can eat, you don't have to wear a mask. Even inside, you don't need to wear a mask. A lot of stores, uh, it's changing slowly, still have masks for employees, but maybe not masks for the people who are shopping in the stores. There's a lot of, I won't say confusion, but the, the things are changing so quickly that often the companies can't keep up with it, particularly when you have chains, let's say a, a uh, you know, just any chain like a McDonald's or or Home Depot, or something like that, Walgreens, where there's 50,000 different places in 50 states, it's hard for the company to say, here's our rule, because often the rules are not just company dependent, but it's state dependent, often city dependent, often county dependent. So, but the good news is wherever you are and however you think about it, things are going in the right direction. So we're looking forward to that. This is June, uh, June 10th, I think, uh, and I, the topic for today is kind of a June talk, actually it's probably more like a May talk, which is great graduation speeches. And we spoke about a little bit about this last night. Um, you know, uh, everything we do on CTSS, including Facebook Live, uh, on Facebook Live you can comment John Viacchino saying hi from Body CT, but mostly it's me talking. We started to do this thing now, and Lily is working with me, on Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. on Twitter. So if you're one of the Twitter members for CT is Us, it's for free, just sign on to Twitter, CT is Us. You can, we then have a conversation and anybody can speak. So Twitter, you think about typing in. There's no typing, you don't gotta do typing. It's just basically a phone call. You just get into Twitter and you can raise your hand, I'll call on you, I'll speak, whoever wants to speak. And we talk, we talk about discussions and, and topics. So we're gonna try doing it, uh, member Clubhouse, you have to be invited. Twitter, you just sign up to join CTSS. It takes three seconds. There's you know 10,000 plus of you who are already on our Twitter account. So that's not an issue then, but if not, just sign up. You can sign up right there and then, just a little click, and then you can get into and speak with us. So Wednesdays, 8 p.m. We don't change the time or the day to, so we don't confuse people. So hopefully we'll see you then. And um, again, you know, like John Bikino from Body CT Hopkins, Tata Quinn Cristano, that's a great name, She's from Las Vegas, and I was reading in the paper, Las Vegas on weekends, the Wynn Hotel said as of last weekend, they're 93% full, which means they're back to normal. During the week, it's a bit less because there's no meetings, but things are coming back even in Vegas. Remember, Vegas had 25% unemployment, now it's down to under 8%, so things are coming back. But the topic today, let me get to the topic, is graduation speeches. Now, all of you have graduated something one, two, or three or four times. You graduated kindergarten, maybe eighth grade, 12th grade, college, maybe a tech school, maybe nursing school, maybe medical school. Uh, you, you finish your residency. Everybody has, everybody has something graduated. And the question then is most talks, I graduated college, I remember, but actually I, I didn't graduate, so I, I don't really remember. But no one remembers who the speaker was. Uh, my kids graduated. Uh, my son went to USC. I do remember his, his graduation speaker. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger. So he was very good. And it's hard to forget Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, my daughter graduated at NYU and it was, it was a Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. 
uh, there was uh, some other people, honorary people, but I remember Judy Bloom gave the speech at Radio City Music Hall, so I remember that. But if you then say, what are the great speeches of all time? That's somewhat a little bit tricky because a lot of speeches are kind of like this, hey, you know, you graduate college, you're incredible, you're gonna change the world, the, the future's in your hands, we wish you the best of luck. Those all sound good, but they're very boring, you know, because they say what you heard when you were in high school. When you're in high school, you're going to college, you're gonna change the world, you're the next generation, you're the best, the best of the best, the best, the best, the best, but it doesn't really say anything. I've listened, I like to listen to talks, and if you listen to things like the talks in history, that people say are the best. Um, Moses coming off the mountain when he got the, the Ten Commandments. Now, I heard that was a great talk, but that, that's not online, so I really can't really tell you. I wasn't there, I didn't hear it, so. But talks like, if you wanna hear wonderful talks, you listen to John Kennedy's inauguration address in January 1961, just an amazing talk. Or some of the talks he gave about the space program, looking about vision, thinking ahead. You listen to Winston Churchill speaking after the catastrophe um, uh, at Dunkirk and actually the successful saving of 400,000 British and French soldiers across the, uh, the British Channel. The amazing tone, the FDR talk after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. But I'm talking about not world events, I'm talking about graduation now. So what is it that makes a great talk? Well, I've listened to a lot of them. The talks that I really like, and again, this is my bias, and some people online, Maverdi Upadalas from Nepal, that's pretty far away, or Mark DePaulis, hey Mark, Mark works for GE, and he's one of our key supporters, GE, on CT Is Us, and Mark's up in New York now. Uh, he's probably suffering, uh, I know he's a big Yankee fan, he's suffering through some Yankee misery, but I like the talks when people speak about their story. And often it's a story that's never as easy. You know, graduation, the person speaking is always very successful. But the point is they weren't always successful. Now, I was just reviewing some of the talks and I listened to one of them last night, J.K. Rowling, you know, as in the person who wrote Harry Potter, uh, spoke about her successes, which followed significant failures. She was essentially homeless and broke with a child. And, you know, she spoke about the fact that it wasn't until she recognized her failures was she able to move forward. Uh, she was homeless and within 10 years was a billionaire. But a wonderful story about human, the human nature, the human spirit being able to succeed uh, just so greatly. Um, there's a wonderful, wonderful talk of um, the one that people typically say is the best talk ever is Steve Jobs at Stanford 2005. Uh, Steve had just been sick, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, that's in the public knowledge, and he had surgery, and he speaks about that a little bit, but then he talks about his life, that he was adopted, then unadopted, then adopted, the challenges, the dropping out, the importance of work, the importance of loving what you like to do, and the challenges of the things aren't always easy and aren't always going to be simple. There's a wonderful talk, and I think this is the one Mark DePaulis is talking about. Admiral Bill McRaven spoke at the University of Texas, Austin in 2014, and he gave a, just a wonderful talk about struggles, about mankind, and the struggles you need to go through to be able to get to the other side and succeed very carefully. Um, there's wonderful talks. I heard a talk this year. Uh, so I mentioned Steve giving one of the amazing, incredible talks, but his wife, um, Lauren Jobs Powell, gave a talk about two weeks ago at the University of Pennsylvania at their graduation ceremony. It was a wonderful talk because, again, she was personal. She spoke about how her father had died when she was three and her mother had four kids under six and how they managed to get through and how she went to college and she took out loans and she got through college and what she did. Then she went to Goldman Sachs, New York, then wanted to get an MBA, went to Stanford and started a company and the rest kind of is history. 
Um, again, talking about how from difficult times, great things came about. And the fact is that you weren't always gonna be perfect. You listen to talks when people speak about mistakes. There's a wonderful, wonderful talk um, by the, the founder, by Larry Ellison, who's the founder of, uh, and was CEO for many years of uh, Oracle. And Larry gave a talk a few years ago, and Larry and Steve were best friends, Steve Jobs. And Larry gave a talk at USC a couple of years ago, and he spoke about his own life, that he went to USC as an undergraduate, he wanted to be a pre-med, the pre-med courses sucked, he hated every moment of it, but he loved California, the water, the mountains, and everything, and he fell in love with that, but he hated school and eventually dropped out. He learned to do some computing, he was good at that, and he did enough computing so he wouldn't have to spend uh, he just did enough so he could spend time in nature. He was, somehow got married along the way. And he mentions when he was in his young 20s, his, he came home one day and his wife said, I'm, I'm leaving you because you're unsuccessful uh, and you'll never be anything. And his parents dropped, you know, disowned him because they, they wanted him to be pre-med and he didn't want to be. And Larry said he then you know, decided what he wanted to do was make a small company with a few friends and maybe 10, 15 people, make enough money so they could live a life of enjoying themselves. And as he says, he wasn't very successful because Oracle was not 15 people, but now it's 150,000 people. And Larry was worth 80 or $90 billion. And he spoke about the challenges of how he did things. He also spoke about one of the things that I think people do take to heart. And he said that, you know, that his challenge was getting through the things because he didn't live up to his wife's expectations and he didn't live up to his parents' expectations. And at the end, it was really his expectations that he managed to live up to and succeed. Steve Jobs, when he spoke, he said, don't live someone else's dream. People often have a dream of what you should be, but maybe that's not your dream. And the only thing that really matters, quite frankly, is what your dream is because you're living your life and those people may, it may be your parents or your friends, and they really want you to succeed, but they may, that's not you. You need to succeed on what you want to do. And whether it was Steve Jobs or whether it was Larry Ellison or whether it was J.K. Rowling, that's the point she made as well, that her parents wanted her to do something. They did not want her to do literature, what she did. She had to lie to her parents. She said they probably didn't know what she studied in college until she, they were at her graduation. And so she even said when things got tight financially, she, it was like she was living uh, her parents' worst nightmares. But it's, it's things like that. And I think in listening to those talks, you do learn a lot. There's a wonderful talk from Ed Catmull at Hopkins. Ed was the head of Pixar for many years. Ed worked with Steve Jobs care closely. They were co heads of Pixar. And Ed's point was you need to make mistakes. He wrote that in his book, Creativity Inc., that you need to not worry about making a mistake. If you don't aim high, if you aim low, let me rephrase that, if you don't aim very high, if you aim low, you may not make many mistakes because you take no chances. The harder you aim, the more likely you are not to be successful. I'm not saying fail but you may not be successful the first time. Edison spoke about how it took him 10,000 times to figure out how to make a light bulb. And he didn't say he, he wasted 9,999, he was wrong 9,999 times. No, 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 no. He said he, he didn't find the right answer 9,999 times, but all of that testing allowed him on the 10,000th try to get the right answer. You know, it's kind of like a baseball player, and since Mark DePaul is on the call and is a big baseball fan, if you bat 350, 350 you would win the batting crown every single year. But you realize the other way to think about batting 350 is you're out, you make an out two of every three at bats. So truthfully, one out of three is 333, you bat 333, you still win the batting crown. But the point is you don't focus on the fact that you, that you got out, you, you know, in a year you may have 600 at bats. You don't focus on this 400 times you didn't do what you needed to do, but you focus on the 200 times you did what you needed to do. 
and maybe someone else could only do 150, then they'd be batting one out of four. 250, you were 333 because you were 50 more. So it's the individual successes, but it's the focus on where you're thinking. You're not thinking about the outs you made, you're thinking about the hits you made, and in the average, you did extremely well. So I think that's really a very good way to think about it. If you go online and you type in on Google best graduation speeches, you'll get many different lists. So um, there probably is no perfect list. And one of the top graduation spe speeches is Ellen DeGeneres at Tulane in 2009. There's a wonderful, there's a number of wonderful talks from Harvard, but you can go online. There's talks from Barack Obama and Steve Colbert and Bono, Jeff Bezos. There's a lot of talks, and it's always interesting when you look at the talk. You can't. You also have to think about when the talk was given. When you listen to Jeff Bezos, 2010, 11 years ago, Amazon was coming along, but it was not what Amazon is today. Um, he spoke about his vision. He spoke about there's a difference between gifts and choices. Cleverness is a gift, kindness is a choice. He spoke about things like that. And then you look and you say, my God, that guy, he said that 10 years ago. You listen to Steve Jobs, his talk about how you need to think about yourself and finding your path in life. That talk was 2005. But that talk is like a Seinfeld episode. It will make sense in 3005. It will make sense forever. Some talks are focused on events and things and perhaps they don't make as much sense. But some talks just really, uh, like the one from um, Lauren Jobs, Powell, she did not mention the word COVID once. She said you had a challenging year. Well, every year is challenging. You know, it's not like COVID ruined everything. I mean, COVID was a difficult year. You can imagine whatever school you went to or whether you didn't go to school. But I think the importance of moving ahead is really what you need to be. So go online, do a Google search, you know, best speeches ever, or type in the individual people I mentioned to you. There's a lot more great speeches. Do not make a mistake and think that those are the only ones you need to listen to. What's good about graduation speeches, they're between 15 and 20 minutes. So even if you don't like it, A, you could always turn it off, that's true, but they're not very long. And so it forces somebody to come to some conclusion and try to make some point. And I think um, it's a really good lesson. And I think it's, it, I find it really enjoyable. I think one thing that the web does provide, you could say all the issues with the internet and everything else, is the fact so many things are recorded and you could listen to them at your convenience even though you weren't there. When you listen to someone like Steve or Larry Ellison speak, I personally feel like I'm in the audience, that I'm transposed to that time and to that place and to that moment and he's speaking to me. I'm not sitting there looking like it's a TV episode where I know I'm not part of the program. I think it's a very powerful way of thinking about things. And as we finish getting to the middle of the month of June, finishing graduation season, it's a good time to look back in order to look forward. I think a lot of what some of these great speeches tell you will be very important for all of us as we look at the post-COVID era, whether it's people who are returning to work, leaving home, uh, going back to normal with that trepidation that, well, you know, because I know in the newspaper like today and every day there's going to be a new COVID variant and the question will be, does the virus, the vaccine work on the COVID variant or is this variant going to require a booster? This question is going to be with us for years. If you ask me, we're going to get a booster every year just because, like we get with the flu, no big deal, we'll all take it. But I think, you know, as we come out of this, this mothball, you know, being basically locked away for 16 months, it's a challenge for people going back to normalcy. I think it's going to be um, not as easy for some people as it is for other people. But I think at the end of the day, it should be great. And we look forward to great things. But if you want to listen to some of these talks, I think it will prove helpful to you. 
So with that, I thank everybody for their attention and have a great day.